Um, today I want to show you how to paint a sea, how to paint uh, a sky and it's one of my favorites because I spend a lot of time at sea and every time when I am painting seas I'm back again. So let me explain something. Um, first I will wet the sky. I don't use too many colors. I only use uh, uh, cobalt blue, lavender, uh, maybe some slight yellow ochre and cobalt teal blue to give some uh, some counter effects. A lot of old Dutch painters did use a lot of yellow ochre to make contrast with the sea. And I use one of the loveliest colors I I, I, I like that uh, Mayan dark blues from Daniel Smith and paint grey blue. They're good for the sea. Um, I prefer starting the sky wet in advance because the colors can fluid very well. And as paper, I, uh, I like to use arches because it can have a lot. It's a nice, so that, that, that will do. And I will like to paint a quite dramatic sky. And I start at the base. I'll, I'll explain you why. Opa. I like to do this a lot afterwards we can give it a good wash again maybe it's too blue now but it doesn't matter what's this and now we'll do some cobalt blue in the sky And it really doesn't matter me about the C that will be at the second stage. You see and what there's too much on it, I lift up a bit. Maybe I use now a bit of lavender here to this part of the sky. And at this stage you can do a lot with the skies because the paper is wet. And if you like to, to make some clouds, then you lift it up a bit. It's so easy and joyful to do. Maybe I even will add some yellow ochre. Not too much. One of the most important things is not only to, to have your strategy or your technique, but also the joy of painting this. That's a good, good weather, but there's a storm coming and uh, well, maybe I can dramatize this here a little bit. I take now some less stark blue. Uh, choose for the paint blue gray. You 
can see I have quite a speed. Maybe I'll add at the top some more blues. Because the paper is still damp, I can use it. This is funny to do, I like to do this, because it gives the real feel that there are clouds, and it gives some brilliant soft edges. And now I will take care of the, well, maybe I darken it a little more, I like it. This is a nice technique to make soft edges and it's good to change it, soft edges, hard edges to make it interesting. It's quite a rough sea. Even there are splashes of the waves. When the paper is still damp, you can add very slightly some colors to give the effect. I prefer for this using this flat brush. This is a Tintoretto brush. Really nice, very soft to give the good effects. Good paper has the advantage that lifting up is quite easy. When a storm is coming or changing of the weather, you often see those stripes in the air. I can even feel it. Wow. 
All right, now we can concentrate about the sea. And painting the sea is um, is another way of making your feel into the painting. I'll take some more whites of the paper. There's some thunderstorm coming, I think. corner the most dramatic one Good, so far so good. So I think the sky is okay. And uh, I'll change some water because it gives more result if you have clear water. Well, I start now with some yellow ochre layers and a little bit cobalt tea blue. It's the under layer. A little wash to give counter effect to the sky. Not too much, but. It's amazing how many times all the sea painters do use this kind of contrast. And maybe here some cobalt teal blue. Maybe some more. Some small corrections. Okay. I have quite a big brush. This is uh, number 18 uh, Tintoretto. It contains a lot of water and uh, well, it's very useful. And again, I use the dark colors. Under the waves, there's always darkness, more darkness. And while painting, you can even feel the waves. It's a kind of uh, imagination that you, you're on in this storm. I did meet a lot of times. It looks not quite dark, but later on it will 
dry up very light more and more light as this and again I make soft edges really nice there are hardly hard edges in a, in a playing C And don't be scared to use pig pigments as long as it's it's dry or wet then you can do a lot of amazing things with it and even now i make use of the light underground But I try to maintain a good speed. I love this. C has a lot of colors and I add now some lavender it's my secret weapon sometimes a bit of king's blue deep these are quite special colors and it's uh, to be honest one of my secret weapons <laughs> Let it go. There are splashes, there's a lot of wind. I love it. A lot of people don't like it, but I love it. And keep on painting. Imagine that there are splashes, that there are sounds of a groaning sea actually you paint your emotions and I love this yellow I first have to soften this hard edges. Later on we can make slight corrections. We'll do this later on. even mix now some city as long as you have a damp paper you can make the most lovely mixtures
a huge wave with the light here concentrated. The sea is always a bit of dirt. There's sometimes uh, you know, ochre. It, it depends on the on the ocean, but in our North Sea, there's always some yellow ochre in it. It gives the special sense. And here the waves are looking for calm down a, a little bit. I often did meet this kind of plushes. This is the more gray part, so I try to to make a variation. A painting never must be a boring uh, one. I try to make this as a point of interest. Well, I think the, the main part has been done and we can um, continue now with some, uh, um, with some details. Details can be very interesting. So it's a lot of lifting make that natural feel. What can be of uh, interest is doing some works with Chinese white. A lot of people never use it, but in some ways you, even when making a C, it can be very useful. Here I made a little cut. 
little cauliflower, so I repair it. This is the more light part of the sea, so I, I, I keep it light. It's good, good contrast. Well, I think I'll darken it up a little more to make the drama bigger. So actually it's um, it is work that keeps you going so you can't sit lazy and think okay I'll do it tomorrow no it's one go and if the mood is there you keep on painting When it's more dry, I can here make some some other deep details. But all the paper is still wet, very wet. And later on, it can be interesting to make some details here. Under the waves, there's always more darkness. Remember? And as long as your paper is still wet, you can you can do it.
Okay, I'll uh, pick, take my hair dryer. Time for make it dry. And now we can add, when it's dry, some dry brush strokes. It makes your painting dynamic. And it's good to have all kinds of brush strokes. Hoppa. I feel the splashes, I feel the the waves, so actually you're paint with fun. Hopla. Again I use dry brush strokes. Painting with the brush. And maybe I do even more fun. Not too much. You can even make some splashes with, with with the brush, but we won't do it too much. Just this part is very useful to make some movement in the water. Well, I think uh, it's a nice sea. It's good rough and uh, there's contrast with the background. Oh yeah, I think it's uh, it's nice. Thank you for looking.